everyone today we're going to be replacing one of the cells in this hybrid batteries just a couple of things we're going to go over uh, when we get to them one is safety this does have a over 200 volt battery and we're going to do some things to minimize the risk second before you get started of course you want to have your battery cell as you see there and i would highly recommend buying one of these composite wrenches to minimize risk uh, do what you want but this i would absolutely not do this job without one of these anyway that being said let's get this thing started a couple more things make sure you have some pretty good weather when you're doing this you're going to be taking all of this stuff out so you're going to have to have a place to put it if you put it outside you don't want it to be raining on you i'm going to try to work and talk at the same time i've got perfect weather here uh, but we're we're going to remove all of this so take out your trunk liners everything must go sail 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 we got our our right side top and our trunk compartment uh, the tire can stay you don't want to take this off of the the battery and at this point what I, I like to do is just use this squeeze connector you can dislocate it uh, from the back here there's a negative cable that bonds to the car but if you just pull this positive lead off you're done so we're gonna pull this panel off these seats off I have removed some of the bolts but you know we're gonna be pulling the trim off so you gotta remove these tie downs right here I don't think you can see them so we've got a tie down here and then there's one over there right here so we're gonna be taking these panels off and that panel off and the seats off so I'm gonna unbolt some of the stuff and then we got a we would have had a bolt here and one inside of there so I'm gonna go ahead and get that started okay so you've taken the rings out on both sides you're gonna pull the velcro back and go ahead lost the mic go ahead and take the seat belts loose right here on both sides push them forward and then there's a just a piece of a trim plug like this on both sides so once you have those two tie downs out you can take this piece off and now we have exposure to the battery we're gonna leave that alone for now and start getting rid of all the trim okay so we're gonna take out the upper seats to get a little more clearance I removed one two three four bolts you simply push down and bring it to you and then you're gonna have to remove this one when you remove the bottom bolt or you can just you don't have to you can tuck this out of the way as long as you have a clean spot you can leave this connected but this gives you access to this whole back side same thing for this other side oh my daughter left a mess thank you <laughs> three she's three all right so now we have access to this whole front we can get rid of some of these other bolts for the trim We can start removing the trim. All right, so just simply pull up on it. We can remove this piece gingerly. All right, so this whole thing just pulls right out. Again, make sure you have a clean split place to put these. I mean, I know you can put them in the front seat. Let's move 
this left side. Now we do have a light switch over here. So we're gonna be a little bit more careful. So, find someone with little fingers. And that didn't take but maybe 15 minutes. Looks like I was out of focus. Yeah, on this left side, there's a, a light switch on the back. You just want to take that loose. All right, so over here on the right, we have the air intake for the the blower or small fan that keeps this battery cool or helps keep it cool and so when you take this apart you probably want to have a camera handy and take a picture because getting it all back together is can be harder than what it looks which one to put on first and and so forth all right, so we're going to start doing that. Now, a lot of this is held in place with trim screw, trim pieces like this here and here. And then we've got another one right there, right here. We've got a bolt. We're already taking it off there. Another bolt right here. And then we've got another trim. It's a bolt, sorry, right here. So, I'm just gonna pull this loose. This pulls out of the blower there. And again, set it aside. And take this one out next. This one's got a, a uh, plug right here on the back side. Real easy to take out. All right, and then set your blower aside. Now, while you got it out, it's always a good idea to clean these fins. Yours will look a lot worse than mine. I've already replaced this this cell. I'm just uh, doing it for to show everyone else how. Anyway, so you clean this out with compressed air, or if you don't have that, then you know you could use. Your mother-in-law's toothbrush, I don't know. <laughs> and this just pulls right out. And remove this clip. Alright, so now you have access here. I'm going to remove these two bolts. And there's some more in the front. Uh, while we've gotten to this point, we might as well go ahead and pull the high voltage plug, which is right here. You just pull straight up. And then down, I mean to the right, right, left. And then pull it out. Set that aside. Uh, don't forget to put it back in. All right, so we're going to start loosening all of this, these other bolts up. But we're not going to take anything out yet. Okay, so full disclosure, I am not recommending that anyone replace their own cells. Uh, you see the warnings here. If you do this, you do it at your own risk. But I am, however, showing you that if you choose to ignore these warnings, how to circumvent some of the risk and do it a little more safely. Alright, so that being said, if you do this, you do it on your own, at your own risk. Alright, cheers. Okay, so we've removed the bolts here. 
and we have removed this is the the battery hold down bolt there's several of them this one keeps the covers together got another battery hold down and this is another cover bolt and a battery hold down you can access the internals just by taking off the lid i'm not advising it i'm just stating what can be done this gives access to the uh, 220 portions of it where everything has been accumulated through the battery all right so we have removed all the bolts on this side and on the opposite side is basically exactly the same thing all right we're gonna remove this here and we're gonna remove this okay now let me show you something to alleviate some of the fear all right this is the two high voltage plugs and we've got it set on 200 volts DC and we have removed that fuse okay so put a lead here and here we've got nothing put a lead here and here and there is zero volts trust me if there was anything above 20 this thing would be yelling so this part is completely safe and you can proceed to take this entire thing out uh, if you're going to do that then you remove these caps here don't lose them take these out you can remove this all in one piece i like to start working and finding out which cell it is while it's still in the car all right i'm removing this lid now if you'll notice here everything is capped off and you should be wearing gloves at this point uh because this these are alkaline and it different than an acid but it'll still burn you so you're going to remove if you're going to leave it in the car to find out which one it is then uh start popping all of these off and again don't touch anything uh, be especially careful okay so taking off all the covers except for one pull these covers off you simply put a something flat flathead screwdriver knife inside these little tabs and then done set the screwdriver aside now we know it's safe over here at these positive connections but the battery is still not safe and that's something you should really know got 127 volts here that's more than what you have inside your house and DC hurts a whole lot worse than AC here to here we got nothing nothing Hundred twenty six seventy. So, do you see the pattern? This one's forty three. So, in order to minimize shock, you can start loosening these bolts right here, these brass bolts. Start loosening them a little bit at a time. Make sure you don't reach across. And uh, we're gonna test these cells out and see what's going on with them the only reason besides making a video that i have this apart is i wanted to charge up the hybrid battery this car is set for maybe maybe a month uh, i had to order an ecu and for whatever reason it took time they said it was programming i don't know if that was it but between the car being down and figuring out what was wrong with it and uh, ordering it, it everything accumulated out to be about a month so anyway we're gonna check the voltages on these and I'm um, just gonna break a few of these loose and show you what happens to the voltage all right at this point we'll just take this out real quick and also this clip on the back side it just simply depresses and pulls out of here all right so using your composite wrench 
and one hand go ahead and break every single bolt loose and then you're gonna take take the socket off and unscrew them with one hand and this will be sticky so you'll probably have to take a screwdriver push them off push them all into a clean container they're sticky they'll pick up any dirt that's around them all right so then you just take one hand again and you're going to pull these off okay it's easier with two all right so we just cut our list our wrist way down set this aside somewhere clean take off this one and the rest of these yep oh, i missed the bolt sorry about that all right so take off the rest of these now this thing is very safe now uh, the most you can get with that other bar still tied down on the other side I chose this side to work because it had the most room and it just didn't seem like my arms or anything could touch any anything on the car uh, it just seemed like a better working environment so anyway now that this bar is gone the most you can get because these are all like 3.7 or 3.8 volts the most you can get is this plus this because it just connects on the other side and then it connects here and spirals back back and forth like a snake so at any point you're only going to have 7.5 to 8 volts which you know that's very safe i mean with metal tools not so much but with your skin and your personal safety it's very safe so then you can do the same thing on the other side all right so you got everything disconnected here I've disconnected all of this so these just disconnect just like this of course it's all the way down you'll want to move this one out of your way and then I, I'm not sure I think this is a temperature sensor wire but I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, this is in this hole you just grab the top with a pair of needle nose or uh, channel locks and you pull this pin up out of here now in order to get this out there's just a couple more things you remove these two wires and these two clips so you got this clip and this clip uh, one more clip and that should be it all right so we unbolted that we unbolted these three plugs Every, everything's on the left hand side as far as the uh, spring the retaining spring so one two and that little one three so we'll grab a pair of gloves and I'll disconnect this charge for now uh, I think I got enough cord to reach outside that was one of the reasons uh, of taking the main housing cover off you don't really have to do it all you really have to do is expose this portion right here the three clips the two pins and the four bolts you don't it's not necessary to undo these I like working on this and investigating everything inside charging it inside uh, you know, in case it rains or anything, all I got to do is shut the doors and I'm done. Alright, sorry. I had to uh, do something else. Uh, again, it's a good reason to work on this inside your car. That way, if you have an emergency, you can take off and all your electronics are inside. Okay, so everything's unbolted. It's ready to slide out. You could take it out the sides. Uh... You have your upholstery to worry about and those sharp edges. I have some nice thick gloves on. I'm going to take it out by myself. Don't really recommend that. This is things pretty heavy. 
but uh, it can be done. Just depends on your constitution. Make sure you grab it. And have a place ready. Have your place ready that you're going to work on it. That way, you know, you're not just having to set it down anywhere. Alright, so we're going to work on this right here. Remove this end clap here. I'm going to take the, the two bars off that you just, just remove those nuts from. All right, you've indicated on the on the battery which one. Just put you another mark down below on the back side. You'll understand that why in a second. Okay, you're gonna flip the whole thing upside down and let the electronics hang on one side and only let the battery touch the table. Now, if you, your mark is right here count one two three four five all right so we're gonna go to the other side one two three four five we're gonna take that bolt out and the rest of the bolts we're just gonna loosen make sure there's some threads left but we're gonna definitely well you don't have to loosen really anything past that bolt right there so I'm gonna take that one out all right so the reason you have to loosen the nuts because these things are are so tight you'd never be able to wiggle one out and so we've got this one up to the fifth you're just going to push your batteries forward until you get to the battery that you've totally disconnected and you can let these stay because you never took the screw out totally the other option you could do of course you don't know which side these are only bolted you know they're alternating bolts so you don't really know uh, unless you do a quick feel up underneath which side the bolt is but I suppose you could probably just prop this up and use a ratchet and ratchet all of these loose if you want to just put a couple blocks of wood under here to raise it up loosen these take this bolt out whichever side it's on and lift it straight out but these I don't know if you can see it this has a recessed divot and these actually lock in. See that one has a, a raised divot. So these kind of get in there locked pretty good. You see there's no nothing going on right here. So when you loosen these, it allows you to, to, to pull it out. But if you don't loosen them, they're held in place um, with those little divots. So it's just easier to, to loosen it. So you get your other, your new one. And again, I'm not replacing this. But make sure that the positive lines up with the two negatives. Because this is a just a series wound battery. And you can either reach up underneath there and put it in or put it in uh, by flipping it upside down but there we go so these all lock in there like that and even though there's not a bolt you see I'm pulling on it see how much pressure I'm putting on it right now if these aren't loose you'll never get that battery out now right now, like I said, I'm still charging all these individually. I don't have a high voltage charger to just clamp on to the very end. So I'm, a, I'm charging one, charging one, charging one, charging one. I'm just going to throw this back in there. But it, again, when you get your new battery, uh, test, test everything. Make sure your new battery is the same voltage. You really don't want it to be more than a, a tenth of a volt off from the rest of them. But... It's all positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So keep that in mind when you're putting that new cell back in. 
that's it if I could play this thing in reverse uh, that way you can see the reinstall I would it's, it's fairly easy actually the brake actuator was a lot more work than this this one is just time-consuming uh, if you have an electric drill to go much faster don't use an electric drill on everything but you know most of the bolts are the same uh, that the biggest issue I would suppose is where to put everything you know once you've taken it out and again that's weather related but thanks for watching hope this helps uh, if you had any other ideas I'd love to hear hear from you that you're interested in I'm thinking about buying a RAV4 is this a, a car I would want to have or, or a dud anyway let me know in the comments below again thanks for watching see you